Welcome to this educational program. It is our sincere hope that this program will enhance the discussions between you and your physician regarding your condition. This program is not meant to replace these discussions with your doctor, but simply to make them more meaningful. The material in this presentation is independently produced. The mention of any medical product or drug does not imply its endorsement. This program is strictly informational in nature, and no attempt is made to provide opinion or recommendations. This module reviews circumcision. Specifically, the presentation focuses on circumcision for adults and boys. A separate module discusses circumcision in newborns. You are welcome to view this presentation as many times as you like. Furthermore, you may pause the presentation or skip through parts of it using the player on your left. You may view the slides in any order you wish. This illustration shows the normal male uncircumcised penis. The foreskin, or prepuce, is the loose skin that extends out over the head of the penis, then folds back over itself. Circumcision involves the surgical removal of this skin. The cut edges of skin are then simply sewn together. The most frequent indications for surgical circumcision are phimosis, paraphimosis, and recurrent balanoposthetis. Phimosis, or scarring of the outermost edge of the foreskin, makes retraction of the prepuce impossible and may progress to almost complete closing of the urinary orifice. In this way, phimosis can obstruct the normal urinary stream, or it may cause tightness or pain with erection. Paraphimosis occurs when a tight foreskin becomes retracted and trapped behind the head of the penis, creating a kind of compressing ring that cuts off blood flow to the compressed part. This leads to severe swelling, pain, or even damage to the compressed penile head. Lack of hygiene, difficulty cleaning the head of the penis, and diabetes can lead to inflammation and painful swelling of the head and foreskin. This condition is called balanitis or balanoposthetis. Whenever possible, these conditions of the foreskin are treated conservatively with proper hygiene and topical remedies. However, these are often not enough and circumcision remains the definitive treatment. The frenulum is the small bridge of skin on the undersurface of the penis between the head of the penis and the foreskin. This bit of skin can be tight in some men and tears with erections or during intercourse. Sometimes circumcision may be necessary to deal with this problem. Finally, phimosis and recurrent balanoposthetis can lead to penile cancer, especially in smokers. When penile cancer is suspected, circumcision is usually warranted as an initial biopsy procedure. Some men without medical problems choose to undergo circumcision for personal, social, or religious reasons. Not all doctors will perform circumcision for non-medical reasons, and it may not be covered by normal health insurance. If requesting circumcision for these reasons, it is imperative that you fully understand the implications and potential risks of the procedure. Most circumcisions in North America are done in the newborn period and most are done for religious reasons or emotional reasons, for example, so that a newborn son will grow up to look like his dad. Circumcision does offer improvement in genital hygiene and a decrease in the risk of urinary tract infection, penile cancer, HIV infection, venereal diseases, phimosis, paraphimosis, and balanoposthetis. The incidence of these conditions in North America, however, is quite low and circumcision is not without any risk. The medical community mostly agrees, therefore, that circumcision is not medically indicated as a preventative procedure. In preparing for the procedure, the zone of the operation must be clean, preferably washed. Your doctors must be informed about all your medical conditions and any medications you take, especially anything that may thin your blood, such as aspirin. Do not take aspirin-containing products for 7 to 10 days prior to the operation without discussing it first with your doctor. In the operating room, anesthesia is given specific to every individual case. Many different types of anesthesia can be used. Many cases are done using a quick general anesthetic combined with a local anesthetic block of the nerves to the penis. This block will provide pain relief for about six hours after the procedure. Antibiotics may also be given in the operating room. After anesthesia is administered, the skin will be cleaned, then the operation proceeds. Your doctor will choose the most appropriate technique of circumcision for your case. The foreskin is excised 
and the wound is closed with tiny, absorbable sutures. After surgery, the penis is dressed according to your surgeon's preference. A variety of different dressings are used. In the recovery room, you will be observed to ensure that you recover fully from your anesthetic and that you have good pain control and no significant nausea. Nurses will check the area to ensure that there is no significant bleeding and that the dressing is not applied too tightly. Finally, it is important that you are able to urinate normally prior to discharge. Written post-operative care instructions are usually given in the recovery room, and of course you can always view this program again once you are at home. You should have a ride home arranged in advance, as you are legally not allowed to drive home after most anesthetics. If a nerve block was given in the operating room, it will provide pain relief for up to six hours, and you may be quite comfortable in the recovery room. Once you are at home, if okay with your doctor, take extra strength Tylenol or ibuprofen right away and every six hours for the first day. An ice pack, such as a frozen bag of peas, may be applied to the area for 20 minutes every hour. Finally, stronger painkillers, usually narcotics like Tylenol-3 or Percocet, are prescribed and should be used only for breakthrough pain. Try to keep the dressing dry for 24 to 48 hours. Do not shower or bathe for at least 24 hours. It is usually recommended to remove the dressing 48 hours after surgery. Despite your doctor's best efforts, these dressings often fall off much earlier. If it does, do not be alarmed. It is recommended that you remove the dressing in the shower if it gets stuck to the skin. Apply an antibiotic ointment, such as polysporin, at least twice daily for a week to the wound. The head of the penis can look very red and irritated after the procedure and for up to 48 hours. A yellowish crust may also form. Swelling and bruising may take a couple weeks to go away. All of this is a normal part of the healing process after circumcision. Recommendations for returning to normal activities vary widely and it is best to ask your doctor for details. As a general recommendation, it is best to remember that if it hurts, don't do it. Soreness and swelling of the penis may last a couple days to a couple weeks. You should be okay to resume work once you are comfortable, but this should be discussed with your doctor. You should also ask your doctor about when to resume sexual activity. Recommendations vary from two to six weeks. Keep in mind that erections early after surgery may tear the sutures. You should communicate with your surgeon, family doctor, or emergency room if any of the following are noted after the operation. Fresh and ongoing bleeding. Significant discoloration of the penis. A high fever. An inability to urinate. An inability to control pain. Or a discharge of pus or spreading redness. Circumcision is a common operation, and problems are unlikely. Having said this, however, circumcision does have some risks, just like any surgical procedure. It is difficult to know what the frequency of these complications is, as few studies have been done which evaluate non-neonatal circumcision. Early after the operation, bleeding may occur. Usually, this can be controlled by compression in the recovery room, but rarely, a patient may need to return to the operating room to get things under control. Wound infections are also uncommon, but can occur after any surgery. Injury to the head of the penis or urethra are very rare, but severe complications. Also rarely, too much skin may be removed at the time of surgery. Finally, complications of general or local anesthesia can occur. Injection of local anesthesia can cause bruising under the skin. If the anesthetic is injected into the bloodstream, heart palpitations or other heart problems can result. If anesthetic with adrenaline is used, blood flow to the head of the penis may be restricted, causing damage. Complications of general or spinal anesthesia should be discussed with your anesthesiologist. More delayed complications are also rare. Reduced blood flow to the penis usually from a tight bandage, can cause damage. Adhesions occur when the penile skin sticks to the head of the penis. Some patients complain of an unsatisfactory cosmetic result or of a change of sensation during intercourse. Both of these are quite subjective and difficult to control for. 
sensory changes take some time to get used to and will eventually normalize. In summary, removal of the foreskin of the penis is one of the oldest and most common surgical procedures performed. It is highly effective in treating certain conditions of the penis and the risk of complications is low. If you have further questions about circumcision, please contact your doctor. You may also wish to consult these references, which are available at your local medical library. We sincerely hope that this module has furthered your understanding of circumcision. We wish you the best for the future, and thank you once again for viewing this educational program.